Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you may have heard of terms like 32-bit and 64-bit, particularly associated with PCs and Windows and things like that. And you may have heard of, you know, oh, this was a 16-bit gaming console, maybe way back in the day. So you've got 8-bit and 16-bit and 32-bit and 64-bit. Well, what does it all mean? Well, please, let me explain. Okay, really a precursor to this video is you need to have watched my video on binary and you'll find a link to it just up here. And when we talk about bits, we're talking about the one or the zero that you find in binary. So eight bits means eight lots of ones or zeros. And actually one, 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 that's eight lots of ones is an eight bit uh, value and its maximum value in terms of a number is 255. And again, go back to that binary video that I did if you need an explanation of what that means. So a 16-bit value is 16 lots of ones and zeros, of which the biggest number would be 16 ones all in a row. And that actually gives you 65,535, which is 64K. So if you think about some of the older computers, you know, the Commodore 64, now you can start to see why the word 64 and 64K was in there, because it's related to 8 bits and 16 bits and so on. Now as a side, we would call traditionally 8 bits a byte, and in 16 bits you can store 2 bytes. Now some examples of some 8-bit processors from way back in the day would be the 6502, which is what you found inside the BBC Micro, what you found inside the Commodore 64. And then when you get to 16 bits, you're looking at things like the uh, Intel 286, and you're looking at the Motorola 68000 or the 68K as it's sometimes referred to. And then the next logical step is 32 bits. So you've gone from 16 and then you go to 32. Now you might be saying, well, why don't you go to 17 or 21 or, or some other random number. Well, basically it's because when you go up in these multiples of twos, you can divide things up very easily. So a 16-bit uh, number can be is actually two 8-bit numbers. A 32-bit number is actually four 8-bit numbers or two 16-bit numbers. And a 64-bit number is two 32-bit numbers and so on. So it's very easy to divide them up along the way. So a 32-bit number is 32 ones and zeros, of which the biggest number would be 32 lots of ones, which gives you this value of four gigabytes. Now you may have heard of four gigabytes when we talk about memory and processes, which we will do in a minute, but that's where you've heard that term before. Why is four gigabytes so important? It's because it's the biggest value you can put in 32 bits. Now, if you want to actually spell it out, 32 bits is 4,294,967,200 and And in terms of 32-bit processors, here we're talking about the Intel 386 and all the chips that came after that until Intel switched over to 64 bits. So we're talking about the 386, the 486, the Pentium, the Pentium 2, and so on. And in mobile, we're talking about the ARM Cortex a8, the ARM Cortex A9, the ARM Cortex A15, and so on. And you know where this is going. After 32 bits, we've got 64 bits, which means it's 64 ones and zeros all in a line together, and that gives you a very large number indeed. In fact, if you want to measure it in terms of storage, it's actually 18,446 pentabytes, which if you spell it out explicitly, it's 18 quintillion 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,615, which is obviously quite a large number. And of course, 64-bit processors, we're talking about uh, the kind of the Opteron that originally came from AMD. That was a 64-bit variant of the x86 architecture. Then Intel followed that on with their Intel uh, Core 2 Duo chips. And then on mobile, you're looking at things like the Cortex-A53, the Cortex-A57, the Cortex-A73, and so on. So I've mentioned a whole bunch of different processors there, the 6502 at one end, and kind of the Cortex-A75 at the other end. And the 6502 was an 8-bit computer, the Cortex-A75 is a 64-bit computer processor. And so what does this mean? Why is one an 8-bit and another a 16-bit? And so on, what does that really mean? So when you talk about computers, there are two characteristics that are important. One is the size of the internal registers that are inside the processor. And if you want to know more about registers, please look at my, this video on how CPUs work. 
And the second is the address and the data bus. So the buses, how wide are they and how much data can they be put onto them in one go? So way back at the 6502 kind of days, internally, uh, the processor could deal with eight lots of ones. So it could deal with between zero and 255. So if you added up, you know, 10 plus 10, that could all happen inside a register and life was easy. If you wanted to go over those 8-bit values, you had to start doing uh, special things like writing them out to two different locations in memory and then handling them individually, but yet combining them to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. Or particularly when they were dealing with memory, because an 8-bit processor like the 6502 can address 64K, and that's because there would be a high address register and a low address register, which would be two lots of eight, when you put them together, make 16. But internally, everything was dealt with in these 8-bit values, and therefore it was an 8-bit processor. And this basically scales up. So a 16-bit uh, processor has 16-bit internal registers, a 32-bit processor has 32-bit internal registers, and the modern processors of today, 64-bit processors, have 64-bit registers. Now there is the, the issue of the data bus. So in a 16-bit processor, the idea is that it can write 16 bits directly to memory in one go. On a 64-bit processor, it can write 64 bits to the data bus directly in one go. And when it comes to addressing memory, well, as I said, in 8-bit uh, terms, there was actually the idea of a high register and a low register. So on many different architectures, actually, the internal bits of the data bus and the internal registers don't necessarily reflect the maximum memory that can be addressed. So on a 386, the idea was that you could address up to four gigabytes because you could address 32 bits in one go. But there are other architectures, for example, the Cortex-A15, which was a 32-bit mobile processor, could address more than four gigabytes because it had this idea of extra registers that could be used to extend the address range. But all of these computers, when they go outside of their address range, they have to address things in two goes. If you wanted to write 64 bits somewhere, it had to be written as two lots of 32. And if you think about it today, even today's 64-bit computers don't actually have 64-bit addressing physically. They might have in terms of virtual memory, but in terms of physical memory, they don't because no one's got 18,000 pentabytes of memory in their PC. So therefore, not all the address lines are actually enabled for writing to those uh, address locations. Now, when we made the jump from 8 bits to 16 bits and 16 bits to 32 bits, we really were talking about factor increases of performance because now the computer didn't need to write things twice or kind of deal with things in one half and then another half and then process them. It could process things in one block, which is absolutely fantastic. And 32 bits, we, we stuck there for a long time, but in the end, the need for 64 bits came along because 64 bits gives us this huge, you know, 18 thousand pentabyte limit and of course there are still calculations that happen today that are more than 64 bits but in terms of general purpose computing 64 bits uh, is absolutely fine there is really no talk yet of going to 128 bits in terms of general processing there are 128 bits in things like vector uh, mathematics but we won't even go into that now but of course you know what 128 bits is it's two lots of 64 bits so you understand the terminology Okay, so that's it. So 8 bits is a byte, then you've got 16 bits and 32 bits and 64 bits. One tiny little bit of information for you. If you have 4 bits, that's called a nibble because it's half of a byte. And half of a byte, is, of course, is a nibble. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up. You know what I'm going to ask you. Please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon so you become part of our notification squad. Please leave a comment below to tell me what you think about this video. And uh, well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.